Ladies and gentlemen, esteemed colleagues and honored guests, good morning. I am Ravina Barrett and today I'm excited to share with you the findings of my systematic review and meta-analysis on tryptorelin therapy for lower urinary tract symptom or LUTs in prostate cancer patients. My co-authors include Flumni Orodi, who is my student at the School of Applied Sciences, and Brian Birch, a urologist and honorary associate professor at University Hospital Southampton NHS Trust, affiliated also to the School of Medicine at the University of Southampton, all in the UK, of course. So prostate cancer globally affects millions of men, leading to distressing lower urinary tract symptoms or LUTs that significantly negatively impact their quality of life. Managing LUTs is therefore crucial for improving patient outcomes. So I performed a systematic review and meta-analysis following the PRISMA guidelines to assess tryptorelin therapy's effectiveness on LUTs management. We searched PubMed, Web of Science, and Embase databases to identify eligible studies meeting our pre-specified criteria. These included patients who had a diagnosis of prostate cancer, suffered from LUTs, were undergoing androgen deprivation therapy or ADT with tryptorelin already, and with both baseline and 48-week follow-up IPSS scores or international prostate symptom scores, as well as a quality of life question um, that reported data across these timeframes. So, after a rigorous selection process, we included three prospective cohort studies totaling 767 patients that were incorporated. So here I present to you He et al. published in 2018, showing a mean difference of minus 9.1 with a confidence interval of minus 10 to minus 7.9. Pelti et al. 2015 published um, a IPSS average decline mean difference of minus 4.2 with a confidence interval of minus five to minus three, and Wu et al. published in 2017, a minus 5.6 mean difference with a confidence interval of about minus nine to minus two. All of these studies had a significant p-value indicating that they were finding things not by chance. All studies demonstrated a reduction of more than three points on the IPSS score indicating clinical benefits to patients. So my meta-analysis revealed a pooled effect size of 1.0497, or what you can see is 1.05 on screen, with a confidence interval of 0.65 to 1.45, a Z statistic of 5.16, and a p-value that was highly significant, indicating that treptorelin was 1.05 times better at reducing LUTs from baseline to 48 weeks. So, what does this mean? The findings of our meta-analysis basically highlight the promising potential for tryptorelin therapy in alleviating LUTs. Furthermore, the sustained effect over a 48-week period follow-up period demonstrates a clinically significant and meaningful effect for patients. Um, I argue in this paper for a product license expansion for tryptorelin to include LUTs as a potential licensed indication. I acknowledge in my previous papers that is showing that post-pandemic patients prefer a lower intensity of clinic visits. I argue where tryptorelin specifically has a pathology of three months to six months as a subcutaneous injection, um, supports this lower clinic visit frequency, and by including it in ADT therapy, that clinicians can increase prescription day coverage that is higher rates of adherence, less chance of loss to follow up and or disease progression because the drug is in the system. While my results are encouraging, it is essential, of course, to acknowledge the moderate to high risk of bias in these included studies that had a very small sample size and less uh, ethnic diversity than would be ideal. So in conclusion, tryptorelin therapy holds significant potential and promise for effective management of LUT symptoms, enabling um, patients more uh, productive and fulfilling life. So what next? I would like to see the following seven studies. I would also welcome support to lead them as a chief investigator or support others as a co-investigator to answer some of these important questions. 
So what needs to happen next? One, we need to conduct a larger, well-designed, randomized control trial with larger sample size and longer follow-up duration to establish the safety and efficacy of tryptorelin therapy, specifically in the reduction of LUTs. Two, compare tryptorelin with other LHRH agents, surgical interventions, or radiotherapy to identify the most effective um, treatment in the management of LUTs for these patients. Three, to perform a cost effectiveness analysis um, to assess economic impact. And importantly, to compare other interventions aiding healthcare decision making as well as resource allocation, as well as to inform insurers and healthcare providers like the NHS as a universal health provider in the UK, as well as patients to make the correct choices for that patient. We need to think about the genetic and genomic potential um, and factors within predicting treatment responses, paving the way for precision medicines to explore approaches to individualized tailored therapy. Six, to focus on patient reported outcomes and quality of life assessments to understand the overall impact of this therapy on well being and satisfaction. Six, to conduct longer term follow-up studies, ideally database studies that go beyond 48 weeks to assess the sustainability of tryptorelin's effects on LUTs as well as the impact on degree, disease progression and overall survival. And to ensure, finally, diversity and inclusion in the patient population to enhance the generalizability of these findings to the um, potential different treatment responses from the various um, patient group specifically to include black patients that we know we have some um, ways to improve care for. So thank you very much for your attention and participation in this presentation. I would be delighted to address any questions or comments that you have about this research and our findings. Let us carry on this conversation offline. I think together we can make a difference and thank you very much for your attention today.